Mr. Arnold. Arnie, please welcome the audience. Oh yeah, you're dying. We need to warm you up somehow. Hmm. What if we go to the sun? Just for a nanosecond. The surface temperature of our sun is 5,800 degrees Kelvin. It sounds terrible, but in fact, this bag of shit does not even sweat for a nanosecond in the sun. The brain realizes that it saw a bright flash only 30 million nanoseconds after. And if we are talking about Arnold's brain, it will take twice as long. But what if you change the teleport settings a bit and say you're inside? The temperature inside the sun reaches 15 million degrees Kelvin, unlike the surface. Here you will already be baked, as it should be. You will feel yourself as if in a microwave before you can be served on a tray with an apple in your mouth due to short photon waves. The heart, stomach, and liver will burst inside the body. Arnie, as you dreamed when you dressed as a pirate and cried, Arr, shiver me timbers, to the last Halloween. Only there is one little problem. Your DNA ionizes even before you burn, so we cannot clone you anymore. Welcome to free space. Did you grab a spacesuit? It was in vain. To the disappointment of the audience, you will not explode because of the difference in pressure. The skin can retain internal organs and protect your blood from boiling. Are you surprised that you are not covered in a crust of ice? The fact is that the vacuum of space has no thermal conductivity and convection. So to get to even absolute zero will take a very, very long time. There's no oxygen, so nothing protects you from the ultraviolet rays and radiation. Soon burns will appear on unprotected skin areas. But this is not the worst thing. Your main enemy is the lack of oxygen. The brain will turn off after 10 to 15 seconds. Arnold? Probably happened already. You fainted. You have about 30 seconds to 2 minutes. If during this time the body is again given access to oxygen and restored to pressure, then you can fully live the rest of your life. Although your full life is unlikely to be experienced. That's because, of course, you have not thought of holding your breath. In this case, the air in your lungs will simply rupture. It is the center of the Earth. The center of the Earth is 7,891 miles from the surface. If Arnold gets there, he'll receive the Darwin Award a hundred times over. Let's give him a hand. Hey, Arnold, catch! Unfortunately, we'll hear a not-so-cheerful sound when you fall into the liquid layer of the outer core of the Earth. Because, first, you will burn, as the temperature is already 2,552 degrees Fahrenheit, just at a distance of 24.8 miles. And not even a handful of ashes can reach the core, as the temperature is like that on the surface of the sun, and you will be compressed with a pressure of over 300 gigapascals. But we did something special special for you, Arnold. We dug a tunnel just for you through the entire Earth. You need not fear either the temperature nor the pressure inside. Assuming that there is no air resistance in our tunnel, you will reach a speed of 18,020 miles per hour. This would be fast enough to escape the Earth's gravity and fly you into space, if you were flying up. You'll find yourself in a state of weightlessness at the center of the Earth, but you will fall further by inertia. and continuously slowing, you will finally reach the opposite end of the Earth, 38 minutes after the flight begins, and your speed will reach zero. And if nobody catches you, then you'll fall back again, doing this endlessly back and forth inside the tunnel. And what could be funnier, Arnold? Meet the black hole. No, we don't mean your ex. Black holes occur when a star collapses under its own weight. Gravity becomes so strong that even light cannot escape it. We'll stay here, but sorry, Arnold, you've got to go. The boundary of a black hole is called the event horizon, and the closer you are to it, the more you get stretched out like spaghetti. By the way, the event horizon is affected by Hawking radiation, so you'll gradually move from being al dente to ashes. But this is just from our point of view. 
From your perspective, you continue to move normally, even after reaching the event horizon. It's strange, isn't it? You just split into two, but this cannot be according to quantum physics. So we had to sacrifice one of our Arnolds. What will happen to you here? No one really knows. Don't ask how he ended up in a Tesla tied to a Falcon 9 rocket, and don't ask why. Just please don't ask. Well, are you ready, Arnie? I'm starting the countdown. Remember, to leave the Earth, the rocket should reach escape velocity speed of 25,000 miles per hour, or 11.2 kilometers a second. Your body will start to feel crazy heavy. It will aggravate your blood circulation in cerebral vessels. Then your vision will become blurred and perhaps completely lost. Hang in there, Arnold. If you lose consciousness, you won't be able to put your spacesuit on. And without your spacesuit, at an altitude of 19 kilometers, the tissues in your feeble body will swell, and all the liquids, such as snot and tears, will start to boil. If I were you, I'd hurry up. Oh, yes. I forgot to warn you that a spacesuit for spacewalks weighs about 130 kilograms. In conditions like Earth's gravity, it will simply crush your weak little chicken body. So you'll have to put it on after you're already in orbit. But take it easy, Arnie. If you move too quickly, there's a chance you'll burn up from the inside. As in space, the body's thermoregulatory mechanisms sometimes fail. Sweat evaporates poorly in space, and this prevents cooling of the body. Therefore, during intense activity, your temperature can rise above 40 degrees Celsius. Oh, hell, Arnold, you fainted after all. Oh, has the duck cheered you up? Well, I have bad news for you. Because of the collision, the navigation equipment has been damaged, and the rocket's off course. The command center's trying to get you back onto the Martian trajectory, but unfortunately, one stage of the Falcon 9 is damaged, and most likely, in five hours, you're going to crash into the moon. What the hell, Arnold? Did you just pee your pants? In the earliest spacesuits, NASA tried to make a system for disposing of waste, but in the end, modern astronauts just use good old diapers, which you certainly don't have, do you, Arnold? Well, I certainly hope you didn't eat breakfast today, because right in front of you, there's a small cloud of space junk, and just behind it, a mini meteoroid. It seems it's time to say goodbye. Hey, you dumbass, put your underpants back on. Today, you're going to visit the smallest and largest planets in the solar system. Do you hear me? You're leaving in one minute. Pull harder. Ready? Go. <laughs> Whoops. We flew too far. More precisely, the sun pulled us in. Now, to overcome its gravitational pull and reach Mercury, we'll need more fuel than we would to leave the solar system. Huh, it worked out somehow. It's dead hot to the left and ice cold to the right. I'll drop you at the junction point. The temperature there is about minus 100 degrees. Great plan. Or it could be if we were on Earth. You can't slow down with a parachute here. Almost all of Mercury's gases have scattered into space due to its weak magnetic field and gravity. What a beautiful sight. Mercury is three times closer to the sun than the Earth, so the sun looks much bigger here. You idiot! Mercury also rotates, but one day here is equal to 88 days on Earth. Pick your butt up and run! Gravity is 62% weaker than on Earth, so your already puny 40 kilograms is just 15 here. <laughs> now you weigh about the same as my cat. Don't move! Yep, moisture comes out of the body. Stomach gases are pushed out. I told you not to drink Coke before we left. The fluid in your soft tissues turns to gas. This explains the bloating. And stop! Ten seconds. Great! Your brain and heart are still working, and death would have come in 80 seconds. Our next stop is Jupiter. Calm down, breathe deeper. Inhale, exhale. Breathe. Dive! With its powerful gravity, Jupiter's pull is two and a half times stronger than on Earth. Your speed is that of a Bugatti sports car, 430 kilometers per hour. Now row out of here, you blockhead. You can't even imagine what it is. Three words. Great red spot. This is the most powerful hurricane in our solar system. Its winds reach 600 kilometers per hour. Our entire beloved planet Earth could be swallowed up by this maelstrom in the blink of an eye. You've descended to 156 kilometers. This is the limit of human exploration. The dense atmosphere doesn't allow for transmission of radio signals or light. This is a zone of high electrical activity, so lightning bolts a thousand kilometers long are quite common. The pressure at a depth of 20,000 kilometers is more than three million times that on Earth, and the temperature reaches 10,000 degrees Celsius, and you're still alive. 
What a great soup we made. And what if we do this? Wow, that was fast. This will definitely negatively affect all vital processes on the planet, particularly in medicine, or such absolutely crucial needs like social networks, likes, and reposts. Only Satanists won't be affected. It might even benefit them. And here's our ultra-fast turtle. Like everything electric, Elon's car broke down. The important thing here is not to celebrate ahead of time. He might be dumb, but Arnold for sure knows how to wink perfectly. Too bad he's intellectually challenged. The battery has died. Now, these guys need somehow get out of the desert. It's good that Elon has already come up with something. And it's even better that his trunk has a, a bucket, a mini rocket, and groceries. Ooh, potatoes are a great idea. After all, one potato can stably deliver 0.5 volts of voltage. It will take about 13 volts to start Arnold's combustion engine car. So, with 26 potatoes, a zinc nail, and copper wire, we should have enough to start the car. Darn it! The crank current is too low. To start the engine, you need hundreds of thousands of potato batteries. I'd advise you to hurry up. The sun is setting and the desert nights here get quite cold. Wow, guys, great outfit. I hope we can do without the famous blue crystal here today. Oh, wait, I know what you're trying to do. If we take zinc bowls, screws, coins, sponges, potassium oxide, copper, brake pads, and we mix them together and connect them to the car, then we'll have a regular battery charge. The guys did everything right. It's a shame that there still isn't enough power to drive. Hurry up, the clock is ticking. Arnold, stop digging around there. Wait, show me what you found. A magnet! This is exactly what we need, Arnold. Hey, Elon, this isn't the best time for that. Ah, it's for a common cause. In 1831, Faraday conducted a similar experiment for the first time. For this, we need a coil, copper wire, and a magnet. We insert the magnet in a coil wound with copper. We move the magnet inside, and in each coil of copper, a voltage of 0.01 volts is generated. But due to the large number of turns, everything is working just fine. Let's see how it works for the guys. Wow, just be careful with your finger. Well, at least we survived. And the finger will grow back. Arnold, leave the Tesla here. And now the party continues. Uh-oh. The rocket has successfully docked with the ISS. Get ready. To open the door, you need to click on the green button in three, two, one. Green button, Arnold, green. I doubt that any of the astronauts are going to rush to your aid after you left them without any food. You have enough air for eight hours. Somehow, during this time, you have to get to the ISS by yourself. Moving your body around ain't gonna do nothing. Even if you run like Sonic, your body's gonna stay in one place. So, here are some real options for moving in space. The first option is using the air from your oxygen tank. Air moves through its tubes at a speed of 50 kilometers per second. This kind of energy, in just 60 seconds, could carry you as far as 3 kilometers. But this will significantly reduce your air supply. So, let's move on to the second option, burrito. You wrapped it in foil, and foil is an excellent reflector. If you make a sail out of the foil, then particles of light reflecting off of it will transmit their momentum to the foil and thereby accelerate you through space. Did you hear nothing I said about a sail? Son of a schmuck! Ooh, we could use that too. Gases exit the human body at a speed of 3 meters per second, and they can fill an entire balloon in a day. You just need to think of a way to let them out. Arnold, what are you up to? How many burritos did you eat? Just a little bit left. Stretch!
And... The average distance from Earth to the Moon is 384,467 kilometers, and every year the Moon moves three and a half centimeters further away. In the entire history of humanity so far, only 12 people have stepped on the surface of the Moon. You will be the 13th. I agree, it's not the luckiest number, but just imagine, there'll be no one on the moon except for you. True, this ain't Miami. The temperature is minus 173 degrees Celsius. And everywhere you go, there's radiation 200 times higher than on Earth. So you can't do it without a spacesuit. But in the meantime, as a tourist, you can check into the hotel. Although construction isn't slated until 2025. Let's go to the far side of the moon. Especially because there's a bunch of cool equipment left there by astronauts. Arnold, jump into the lunar rover, start the engine, and drive. Believe it or not, there are a few lunar seas. Only, they're not filled with water, but solidified lava. Arnold, wrong pedal! Hit the brake! Congratulations, Arnold. You just smashed into the U-22 Chinese lunar rover. And you damaged your spacesuit. Oh, no. Houston, we have a problem. Well, what if the Earth suddenly stopped? At a full stop, due to inertia, all objects will fly east, reaching a speed of more than 1,500 kilometers an hour. Also, atmospheric disturbances will create strong winds. But at the same time, don't forget, the gravity of the Earth will remain the same. The momentum of the oceans and seas will create giant tsunamis, absorbing 27 kilometers of land per minute. A complete day will now last a full year, as the Earth, at a speed of 29.78 kilometers a second, makes a full circle around the sun. Daytime, sunrise to sunset, will last for six months under the hot, burning sun, with the remaining six months being nighttime, with the chill dipping down to minus 55 degrees. With the Earth stopped, its centrifugal force will create high hills at the equator. Later, they'll disappear, leaving one solid ring continent at the equator, separating two gigantic oceans. But the worst thing that will happen will be due to the core of the Earth stopping spinning. After all, it's the large molten metal sphere, which, through rotation, generates the Earth's magnetic field. The magnetic field protects the planet from radiation, so from now on, being on the surface surface is deadly dangerous. You're now in the Dashti Loot Desert in Iran. This is the hottest place on the planet. If I were you, I'd start conserving liquids. There are three million sweat glands in the human body, so you're going to lose up to three liters of fluid per hour. And all the salts in your body are going to get taken out of the liquids, and this is going to cause spasms in your limbs. Arnold, don't jump in there! It's just a mirage. Hmm, I guess sometimes there really is some benefit to your stupidity. Okay, so now you're gonna get cold. Let's find out where you are. This ain't the best situation, buddy. You're in the village of Oymyakan, Yakutia. This is the coldest place on Earth. A temperature of minus 71.2 degrees Celsius was recorded here. Yikes! According to statistics, 140 people a year here die from hypothermia. Come on, get moving! The human body temperature is 36.6 degrees Celsius, but in cold like this, it'll drop. And how? Your body's gonna try to warm up, and it does this by shivering. Then your memory will start to go. And next, your mind. Although, for you, Arnold, that's pretty much your normal state. This will be followed by a full sense of warmth. Arnie, buddy, you really need to start stamping your feet or death is gonna get you. Come on, Arnold, you can do it! Great job, buddy! Where did he go? Hey, yeah, let's fly to Mars! Your friend Elon has a program for this. Everything we need is already waiting for us on the big red planet. And we fly immediately while the window between Earth and Mars is still open. You ready? Okay then, fasten your seatbelts and three, two, one, go!
Although it's a really long flight, I promise you won't get bored. It's a meteor cluster, Arnie. Look out! They can damage the shuttle! Quickly, get to the cargo hold. It's the only place they can protect you. By the way, we're in a closed, sealed, unventilated area, and there's not much oxygen left, so try to save it. Perhaps, for the first time in a long time, you're truly lucky, Arnold. But alas, with you, it's all in vain. Legumes contain a lot of sucrose, which isn't digested in our stomachs. The most harmful types of sucrose lead to bloating. They're called raffinose, stachyose, and verbiscose. When they enter your intestines, bacteria begin to produce huge amounts of gas. So now you have to breathe your own farts. Serves you right, you moron. Come on, it's not so bad, Arnie. Breathe your fart. Reaction with hydrogen sulfide can prevent mitochondrial cell damage. That makes it possible to prevent the development of diseases such as arthritis, heart disease, and even stroke. So breathe deeply, Arnold. It's actually healthy. Well, I really didn't think you'd make it this far, buddy, but you're doing great. Really? Hey, buddy, I thought I'd do something nice. I saved a suit for you. Nice. Skip it about the hair. Wind speeds on Mars can reach up to 100 meters a second. That's fast. Finally, some decent food. Open it quick. Let's see what's inside. Beans. Beans again. And again. And what's that there? What does it say? Hello, champion. I hope you have enough of this supply of healthy and very nutritious beans to wait until the next ship arrives. We'll send it when Mars and Earth next pass as close as possible to each other in about two years. Good luck! Ah! <gasps> That's what happens when you hit the snooze button ten times in a row. You can oversleep the general evacuation of the whole planet. Come on, Arnold. Don't go <laughs> rushing to get your panties all in a twist. People left a bunch of really cool stuff behind. What are you gonna do first? Seriously? A really huge burger? But what about cool cars and the opportunity to live in Trump's apartment? Do something cool! Wow, Arnie, you are a true hero. Releasing all the animals from the zoo, it's damn noble. Come on, folks, leave a like for this. But what about pets? There are 500 million cats and just as many dogs on Earth. And once they're free, they become prey to predators. But let's not talk about sad things when the whole dang planet is open for business. Yeah, the coolest roller coaster. The car accelerates to 206 kilometers an hour and drops from a height of 127 meters. Before, Arnold, they didn't let you in here because of your height, but now it's no problem. Hmm. Somehow it doesn't look like it's all that fun. Without people, electricity will gradually disappear. Lithium batteries self-discharge after seven years. And you can forget about solar energy after about 20 years when the last panel fails. And nuclear power plants in a few decades will stop forever without human service. Arnold, get out of there! If you get injured, you won't be able to call 911. This time, you're in luck. As you can see, the problem with garbage ain't going nowhere. Plastic and glass will decompose only after 700 to more than a thousand years, and it will only get worse. Here, you can eat sweets and candy bars all day long. And you can drive around the store in a cart. At your disposal are goods for recreation, sports, clothes, and even medicines. On average, there are 120,000 different products in a hypermarket that will provide you with 50 years of a carefree life. But unfortunately, without electricity, a large part of these goods are going to spoil the very next day. At room temperature, the entire ton of milk that's in the store will be gone in just 18 hours. Fresh chicken, pork, and beef will all go bad within a day. Cakes and pastries will last a little longer, maybe 36 hours, if you're lucky. You could try to prepare, 
you could salt the fish and dry the bread. Then their shelf lives will be extended by years. But hey, seize the day, right Arnold? After a week, vegetables and fruits will also go bad and you'll have to switch to cereals. But even just their preparation will deplete the limited supply of water you can drink by at least 10 years. You could try to extend that by filtering it through coal from the gardening department and then cleaning it with silver. Okay, so from now on, your usual meal is going to be canned food. Beef stew can last almost indefinitely if the packaging isn't damaged. And pickled cucumbers and tomatoes can be an additional source of water. So, the three tons of canned food that are in the store will last you for eight years. And then the last remaining source of food will be... Many things can be used for other purposes. For example, you can wipe your bum with just about any kind of paper. You just need to crumple it up thoroughly and, well, use it. Just like our great-great-grannies did. And when you run out of cash, you can always use the card. Hmm. <gasps> Arnold, relax. You don't even know what a meteor is. A meteor is a large celestial body of cosmic origin. Their mass ranges from a few grams to thousands of tons. And don't be scared. There's only one case of a meteor strike hitting a person in history in 1954. And even then, it just hit somebody in their leg. It seems like somebody's volunteering to save the planet, and he's just bursting with enthusiasm. It looks like this episode will be the shortest ever, and have a happy end. Ah, uh, no, never mind. Same old, same old. Seems like our planet is about to be destroyed. Or maybe there's another savior. Could it be Arnold? Excellent. We'll pick an outfit for you. So this one is a no, definitely not this one. Yee, no, not that one. Now this one, this is what you need. Although we could just copy what Project Dart from SpaceX did. It's planned that in 2022, a spacecraft weighing 500 kilograms will ram into an asteroid named Didymos at a speed of six kilometers per second. The autopilot hasn't been installed yet, so you're going to have to fly manually and become a hero. Oh, wow, Arnold, you survived. Pretty much like all the other lowest forms of life, like microbes. But now there is a small issue with water. After a meteor 100 kilometers in diameter hit the Earth, the shockwave destroyed almost all life within a radius of 100,000 square kilometers. There was a huge release of sulfur, and dust and ash from all the destruction rose into the upper atmosphere and blocked access from the sun's mm. rays. You must be hungry. It's good that you kept your space food in the rocket. There wasn't any food. That's terrible, because there's no food left on Earth. It's good that you're in a spacesuit, since it's minus 50 degrees outside, and you don't want to walk here for very long. Watch out! I forgot to add that cockroaches have also survived, and they've mutated just a wee little bit. You better run to infinity and beyond! Arnold, how in blazes did you get yourself into such a state? Arnold, I know you're a little tired of all of our experiments. How about some happy time for you then? We can arrange that. Here, take this remote. As you can see, it has three buttons. Press the first one. You've just traveled three billion years back in time. Only unicellular organisms live during this era. No pain, no humiliation. So Arnold, you happy now? On second thought, to be honest, I'm worried for humankind if you should somehow become its founding father. Ah, uh, how's this for a change? Earth, 2020, and you're now the happiest human alive because you're the only human alive. Everyone else on the planet disintegrated when a dark matter experiment went awry. What are your plans, Arnold? Hey, where are you going? I wonder how long you can survive. With no one to work at power plants, there's no more electricity. And that means no heat, no fridge, and no clean water. Maybe you should look up some survival tips on the internet. Oh, wait, there's no internet anymore. You're just going to have to figure out how to survive on your own. 
water. Bottled water has a shelf life of about two years, and you can sterilize river water with strong alcohol. What about food? The only food products with an unlimited shelf life are rice, powdered milk, and honey. And to be honest, I think it's unlikely you're ever going to master the art of hunting. To diversify your diet, you're going to have to move to Mexico. It's warmer there, and you can take up farming. You're also going to need to acquire some medical skills so you don't die the first time you cut yourself. And even after solving all these basic survival issues, you'll have to try not to lose your mind from the absolute and unrelenting loneliness. Well, looks like you made it, Arnold. Alone and without all those pesky people who produce foodstuffs, build houses, manage water treatment facilities, monitor sensors at nuclear power plants, and control space stations. It's time for the third button, Arnold. And you've still got two fingers left to press it. I believe in you, man. Press the button.